And breaking overnight, CNN got word that a key attorney to Donald Trump turned critical witness has left his legal team. Evan Corcoran was hired to help Trump in the classified documents case, but he became a central part of the very indictment because of the meticulous notes and memos he took about his interactions with Trump. The indictment referred to Corcoran as Trump Attorney One at least 20 times. And it was from Corcoran's notes and memos that we learned that Trump allegedly misled him about the whereabouts of the classified documents, encouraged him to lie to the Justice Department and withhold these documents allegedly. If the case ever goes to trial, prosecutors could potentially call Corcoran as a key witness. And this morning, we know he is out of the fold. And as Maggie Haberman told us overnight, that is disquieting to Donald Trump. His departure comes just ahead of a hearing today for two of Trump's co-defendants in that case. Trump aide Walt Nada and Mar-a-Lago employee Carlos D. Oliveira both hope a judge will toss the obstruction cases against them. First, let's talk about Evan Corcoran. CNN's Caitlin Polance with us this morning. Corcoran out of the fold. He is indeed. Evan Corcoran in this indictment against Donald Trump in the Florida classified documents case. He's all over it. He's called Trump attorney one multiple times because he was a witness to multiple things in this indictment. Crucially, all of those allegations that Donald Trump was trying to obstruct the Justice Department and the federal government from getting back classified records in his possession. Trump attorney one's a pretty apt title for him, too, because he was not just part of the original team. He was the lead attorney for Donald Trump at a really important moment in the January 6th investigation where the Justice Department was pursuing testimony from people as important as Mike Pence. That was Evan Corcoran, the man fighting those battles on the front line as the investigation bore down before Donald Trump was charged. After that, uh, he became the person that the Justice Department compelled to testify. They forced him to come into the grand jury and reveal information, making him a cornerstone witness of this indictment in Florida against Donald Trump. So he had continued on representing Trump in the January 6th probe, but really was the person who witnessed something as significant as when Donald Trump was talking to him about the classified records found and apparently making reference to not wanting those classified records to be turned over. So specifically in the indictment, one of the things that happened is that Corcoran goes to a storage room in Mar-a-Lago collects under a subpoena's orders 38 classified records that are in those storage room boxes, puts them in an envelope, talks to Trump about it, and they're about to turn them over to the FBI in June of 2022. Trump says, did you find anything? Is it good or bad? And then according to Evan Corcoran, Corcoran's memorialization of this conversation, Trump then makes a plucking motion and says, OK, why don't you take them with you to your hotel room? And if there's anything really bad in there, you know, pluck it out. Of course, Evan Corcoran didn't find all of the documents at Mar-a-Lago at that time. There was more than 100 more found in the search by the FBI later on. There's going to be a major fight whether he testifies against Donald Trump at the criminal trial in Florida, but it is pretty significant that he has totally cleaved himself from the legal team. Do we have any sense of when exactly that happened and if it has any actual legal significance, deliberate legal significance for the Mar-a-Lago case going forward? Well, I don't know if it changes anything about what we know in the Mar-a-Lago case. He was able to continue representing Trump on this other matter, January 6th, as long as he wanted to. But he had taken a back seat. He wasn't the person who was primarily writing a lot of the motions and taking the case to the Supreme Court on presidential immunity in that case. But he was with Trump when Trump was arraigned in Washington, D.C., related to the 2020 election, January 6th charges. In the Mar-a-Lago case, there's going to be a really big mm. fight coming over whether he can be testified, whether the information he gave prosecutors is going to be part of that case. So, John, at very least, he's a guy to watch. And now, to an extent, in the wilderness. Caitlin Polans, great to have you this morning. Thank you very much. Breaking overnight, a key attorney is leaving Donald Trump's legal team. The departure of Evan Corcoran raises eyebrows because prosecutors could call him as a critical witness in the classified documents case if it ever gets to trial. Corcoran's memos and notes about Trump had laid the groundwork for prosecutors in that case. 
With me now is National Security Attorney Bradley Moss. Counselor, very good to see you this morning. Now, when Caitlin Collins broke this news last night about Evan Corcoran leaving Trump's legal team, no longer working for Trump, you posted on social media, and I want to put it up so people can see, you posted on social media, ooh, and I think I count seven O's <laughs> in that. Now, is that a legal term there? What did you mean by ooh? Yes, there's a there's long uh, established case law on that. Ooh, let me tell you. But no, I think everybody expected at some point this was going to happen. The only question is, why did it take so long? Look, the moment Evan Corcoran was compelled to testify before the grand jury, the moment he was ordered by the judge in D.C. to turn over those notes, it was almost guaranteed at some point he was going to have to leave this legal team. He was conflicted out on that case, obviously. He had stayed on in the D.C. cases, but it was going to be a very uncomfortable situation to have your lawyer going up there who's allegedly still representing you in other matters, testifying against you, and being one of the critical star witnesses in the obstruction angle. So I think we all expected this would transpire at some point. I don't know why it quite took so long. Maybe it was the optics. They didn't want to immediately show him being shoved out the door. But this is just one le more piece they don't have on that legal team. It's already an overmatched legal team because Donald Trump can't hold on to lawyers, and now they've lost Evan Corcoran, too. Oh, it's interesting because Maggie Haberman was on with Caitlin last night uh, as Caitlin was breaking this news, and Maggie reported that this information is disquieting. The fact that Corcoran is out is disquieting to Donald Trump. I'm curious why you think that might be. So the problem for Donald Trump is Donald Trump hates lawyers who take notes. We've learned about this. His, his idol of lawyers is Roy Cohn, the disgraced late, you know, lawyer from the 70s and 80s. He thought lawyers don't take notes because those notes can be used against your client. We heard about this during the Mueller probe. He was saying, oh, real lawyers don't take notes. Actually, real lawyers do take notes, and it's those notes the contemporaneous voice recordings that Evan Corcoran did that are being used against Donald Trump in the Mar-a-Lago case, particularly on the obstruction angle, to show intent. So if Donald Trump is finally pushing him aside, that shows they expect that their efforts to get his testimony suppressed are likely going to fail, that if this eventually does make it to trial, that Corcoran's testimony is going to be very critical and very damaging, and they're going to try to make this sort of a, a bit of a separation between them themselves and Corcoran going forward. They're going to try to downplay what Corcoran wrote down, what he recalled, and sort of say, oh, you misunderstood the boss. So it was a busy overnight in the Mar-a-Lago documents case because also we got the filings, the transcripts of the FBI interviews with Walt Nada and Carlos de Oliveira. And Nada and his team are basically arguing to have the case against him dismissed because they say he didn't know he was moving classified documents. He had no knowledge of X, Y, and Z. Anything you see in those transcripts that raises your eyebrows? And do you think he's got a case here today? Yeah, you can see from these transcripts, even just the cursory review, the FBI agents clearly weren't buying what Nauta was initially selling. They were very skeptical of his claims. They had it, you know, they were very much looking at it as you sound like your coach, not usually necessarily using those words, but sort of expressing that kind of skepticism. It sounded like he was coached. And certainly they came back to it later on and where he admitted to moving certain things and that he had more knowledge than he had originally admitted to. And that played a key role in him getting hit in this indictment on the obstruction angle. Now, what he and De Oliveira are trying to do certainly was, you know, was within their right to do. They're trying to argue they didn't have the requisite knowledge, the indictment is too vague, et cetera, et cetera. These are very standard pretrial motions from a defense attorney that you would expect to see. I don't anticipate it will be enough, even with Judge Cannon, to get it thrown out. But we're getting sort of a preview here of what their anticipated defense will be at trial if both Nauta and D. Oliveira don't cut deals beforehand. And that's a great point. Uh, even if Judge Cannon doesn't throw it out, what you do see here and what we will see today is a preview, which makes it so interesting. Bradley Moss, great to see you this morning.